All right, today we're gonna to tie the redfish critter. We're gonna start here with a Daiichi 2546 size two. Get some orange thread. And we're just gonna start by doing eight wraps back from the eyes. So one, do eight wraps back just so we know where we wanna place our eyes and just kinda of get our eyes in the same place every time. The eyes we're gonna use are these hairline dubbing double, pu double pupil eyes in size small. If you wanna make this a little bit heavier, you can always go to the mediums. If you wanna go a little bit lighter, some extra large bead chain also does really well on this pattern. Or if you wanna tie this pattern even smaller in a size four, or if you really wanna get fancy in a size six, those bead chain eyes really come in handy if you want to make this a uh, bonefish fly. So we'll do some extra wraps, some helicopter wraps. Make sure we just get those eyes on there secure and straight. Next thing we want to do is just bring our thread all the way back to the bend of the hook and even a good way down the bend. From here, we're going to get our orange medium palmer or uh, cactus chenille. You don't have to use orange if you like, you can use pink or red. Anything that kind of gives the appearance of an egg sac or gills. Just kind of a uh, hot spot on the fly to get the fish's attention. So we're just gonna tie that in, work our thread back up to the front, just get it out of the way and just palmer this in. As you palm it in, you can stroke it back just a little bit, just get a little bit more on there. Just make it a little bit more filling. I'm gonna work this up right into about the point where the bend starts to straighten out with the hook. We'll do one more. And we can just unwrap some of this thread and wrap this down. Up in front of it and cut that out. Now we can take our thread, wrap right back over that, all the way back to that point where the hook straightens out. Next thing we want to do is tie in our eyes. We're going to use some homemade eyes here, just made with Loon UV Thick and some Loon Hardhead really easy to make we'll probably do a video on some point on how to do eyes and weed guards and all those kind of little extra pieces we're just going to tie those eyes in we just wanted to extend a little bit past our egg sack here get another eye get one on this side of the hook that's not a very good looking eye but so goes things Make sure your eyes are tied in there nice and secure so they don't go anywhere on you. You want to try to have them relatively matched up, but if they're not perfectly even, I don't think the fish are going to care. You just want to wrap, do a couple wraps on the insides of each eye just to kind of spread them out from each other. Do a couple, three or four on each side. Now you can kind of see they're spread out. So the next thing we're gonna do is grab our fox. This is a red fox tail. You could use Arctic fox. You could use coyote. There are a bunch of different kind of tails that'll work for this. Anything that's got a nice little wavy action to it. I like this red fox just because of its coloring. It's got these nice little black tips on it, which give it a little, a real shrimpy appearance. So we'll cut a section of that out. And we'll take it, we'll hold it by the ends just like this. And we'll get our nice little brush here. And all we're gonna do is just brush out 
all the under fur. You can see a bunch of that under fur comes out. All that's just gonna add bulk to your fly that is really unnecessary. So get that out. Then you can look at your ends. If you have any ends that are just way too long, you can pick those out as well. Some people like a few sticking out, kind of look more like antenna. But once you have it how you like it, just kind of measure it on the hook and go ahead and tie it in. You can make this tail section as long or as short as you really like. I like it just so that you have these kind of reddish fibers flowing right into the black. I don't like to get a whole lot of the gray fibers in there when I'm doing this natural color. Just making sure that's nice and secure. Next thing we're gonna do is get some tan medium Palmer chenille. Cut off a little section of this, maybe like four inches or so. I like to add a little bit more than others just because there's not a ton of flash to this fly and I like a little more flash in it. So I add a little bit more than this, a little bit more of this material than I, or than you'd see of other people who tie this fly. So we'll get our hackle pliers. All we're going to do is just palmer this right around the hook shank. Probably do about four wraps here on top. And then probably like four or five wraps here on bottom. A little too spread out there on my wraps. And just kind of make sure each time you kind of stroke the fibers back. Sometimes this material will crinkle up on you and kind of try to fold forward. There's no worries. You can just fold it right back and then tie over it. So, looks good. And just tie it in. and cut out the excess. And just kind of stroke it all back. Kind of tie back on it just to make sure all of them are laying back and then bring your thread forward. Do a little bit behind the eye here. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our silly legs on this natural color, I actually like this olive and orange. We're gonna get two legs out. What I like to do is just take the ends of the legs and do a little overhand knot on each side. I can get this side, this side kind of came apart on me here. I'll fold the right way. There we go. And I'm just gonna give each side a little trim. And all that's gonna do is just give the little impression of some small claws as they flutter around in the water. So go ahead, take one half of it, tie it down one side of the hook, kind of getting it as far back as we can, bring our thread back, get our other side, and tie it down this other side of the hook. 
as far back as we can get it. So, a little placeholder, I like the eyes, just to kind of hold the legs in place there. So the next material we're gonna use, we're gonna get our grizzly hackle. Already got a piece picked out here. We're just gonna kind of trim off some of the section here we don't need. And we're gonna lay it with the curve facing towards the fly and just tie it in here on the top. Kind of running low on my hackles there. I wish I had a few longer ones, but this one should do for this fly. So we get our hackle pliers. All we're gonna do is just palmer this hackle right in. Just one wrap right after the other. Try to keep it as tight as you can. Normally I like to have a little bit longer of a hackle so I can go further forward because when we tie this in, we're just gonna fold it all back and tie right back over it. Use as much as that feather as we can get. And tie our feather in here. I can kind of stroke all these feathers back and just tie back on them. If you want, just kind of clean up this little area, kind of make it smooth and even. So when we tie our brush on there, it's a nice little section to tie the brush. So as you can see, our feathers now laying back and it looks nice and tight on there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a EP tarantula brush. This is the half inch. And go ahead, clip this little end piece of wire out here. And we're gonna tie it right here on top of the hook. I'm gonna jump over the eyes with our thread. Again, we can get our hackle pliers if I knew where I put mine. There it is. And we're just gonna palmer going forward, trying to keep really nice tight wraps. Normally, I can get about two flies per tarantula brush. Uh, if you're really, really tying them sparsely, you could probably get three flies per brush, but I like it to be, I like this section at least to be a pretty dense section of the fly. Usually right around nine or 10, you know, eight or nine wraps, I think. So you can probably get one more wrap on there. Get that off. Yeah, one wrap's good. Flip our fly over. Jump right over the eyes and tie in on the top side over the eyes. Get our bad scissors and cut that out. Got any little extra pieces hanging here? You just kind of cut those out too. And work our thread all the way up to the eye of the hook. Now, if you weren't going to tie a weed guard in there, you could go ahead. Just kind of build up a little head here or whip finish it as it is and it would look fine uh, but we're gonna add a weed guard today so we got some 30 pound mason hard mono just cut out a little section if i can find any of my tools today no none of my tools oh there we go take our pliers just clamp down very end of it fold up now you have this little 
flattened section here at the end, which will be perfect to tie on so it doesn't roll on you too bad. All you're gonna do is just tie that right in on the top. Kind of fold it back a little bit. And just put a bunch of wraps right behind this piece of mono. So all you're looking for the piece of mono to do is just stand straight up. I try to get it to where it goes just a little bit forward. So as many as you need right here. I wouldn't worry about making this head too bulky. I mean, if it's a big bulky orange head, it's just gonna be another hot spot on this fly to attract some redfish. Go ahead, trim it off just a little bit higher than the hook point. Got a few more wraps in there. And then we can go ahead and just whip finish our fly. If you got any little stragglers hanging in there like I do, a lighter, just come in there and kind of singe them away. And the last thing we're going to do is just get some loon thin and just cover up our thread wraps with some loon thin, get it over the eyes, over all these thread wraps here on the front, a little bit behind our weed guard, a little bit in front of our weed guard. Kind of give it a few turns just to let it even out some. Hit it with our light. And that's it. That's our redfish critter. Thanks for watching.